allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And have all the uh, commissioners uh, read the uh, minutes from the last meeting of August 16th? If so, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, minutes as are. Make the motion. Uh, Dave makes the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mike seconds. Where's my little cheat sheet? Are you taking care of it? I forgot it in the office. <laughs> okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same. And it carries. Presentation of bills. Has everybody had a chance? Carried. Are you guys going to approve your minutes from your meeting on the 17th? Because it wasn't a meeting. Whether you called it or not, I am a little disappointed that the commission <clears throat> would allow the meeting to happen. Number one, because not everybody that wanted to be there or knew about it was there. But I would hope that you guys would not have that type of a meeting ever again, because that does not look good for us to do that type of a meeting. Well, I take issue with Levi that <clears throat> it was there because uh, we had the uh, local representatives that had come uh, previously to the commission meeting that wanted to talk about flooding issues. And I'm well aware of the fact that when you get more than two commissioners together, it should be a special meeting. But in this instance, I didn't call it. It was just basically relaying information that the residents then called the meeting out there. And with both Dave and Mike being uh, on the actual street itself, residents of the street, uh, at that point, I said yes you know, to Dave that you, you can come. And, and, because I wasn't going to call a special meeting for it. This was <coughs> an information gathering <coughs> uh, uh, meeting that was talking about the flooding, on, specifically on Loyal Avenue, and it was for the city engineer basically to get together along with our city engineer to talk about potential opportunities and what the flooding issues were basically. So <coughs> I uh, considered it, if you want to call it a social meeting, if you want to call it a mitigation meeting for emergency services, which doesn't require a special meeting, you know, there's a number of things that we could have used that, uh, you know, took the place of a special meeting. So I do take a, a, a exception of basically that it wasn't a special meeting. There was nothing. We uh, actually went out and we uh, put it on. We videotaped it. We asked Deds to come over so that anybody that wanted to have access to it could have access to it. But as far as I'm concerned, it was not a city commission meeting. If it wasn't a city commission meeting, then the minutes that were published online say differently. Terry, if I turn this into the Attorney General for the state of North Dakota, he would call it a meeting. There was three of you were there. It's a done deal. It's over. It happened. What I don't want to see happen again is this type of way that it was brought forward. It should have never happened. That's what I'm saying. I am saying that there was three commissioners there and not everybody in the public was invited to. Just as you and I and the rest of the commission got an email from a resident that wasn't invited to it. And I answered that email specifically the same answer I gave you just a minute ago. But, so if I turn this over to the Attorney General, is he going to call it a meeting? Well, I'd be happy to visit with the Attorney General about it not being a meeting. So it's not a, you know, tried and done thing. Like I say, if you go into the special meeting laws, uh, the code, and you can read there's a couple of ex exceptions to that that... Uh, Basically, I think that we have a viable, uh, and I didn't actually ask for minutes to be produced and put into the, uh, all I asked for was a videotaping of the actual, you know, get together so that people could take a look at it from a flooding issue. And again, Loyal Avenue flooding has been an issue for many, many years. And being able to get that information to, this, to the city engineer, as well as the rest of the people hearing. And again, both of these individuals as commissioners live on Loyal Avenue. And if they wanted to call it a social meeting, they could perfectly, uh, they'd be in their perfect rights to take and do the same thing. There's two things that make it a, an actual commission meeting. Number one, there was three commissioners there. And number two, you discuss city business. That makes it a commission meeting. We, Terry, we let talk. me finish. 
I am not saying, I'm not upset that the meeting happened. I'm just asking, number one, the, the three of you won't allow this to happen again because it doesn't look good to the public that this type of meeting happened. Whether you say it it's a meeting or not, I could call a duck that is green, yellow, just because I call it yellow doesn't mean it's right. You had a special commission meeting. The minutes were made. It was videotaped. Everything else, the banner was asked to come there. It was a meeting. There was an agenda. That is a meeting. My point is, and hopefully then you will put it to rest, that you guys won't do this again to the public. That's all I'm asking. And I'm well, let's, what if we approve the minutes and agree that, yes, it won't happen again? Well, I don't think, again, that it was a special meeting. Well, let's put it to rest. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But again, <clears throat> I considered it. And again, I, if it would have been any other circumstance besides you know, both Mike and Dave being on that Loyal Avenue street, I would have said no. So there wouldn't have been more than one, or two, I should say. Well, I found out about it after the meeting, a regular meeting. You told me about it. Well, I didn't know that Mike was going to be there until the the morning before, and I when I was in, was gonna be in when I was in the office, and Ashley said that Mike was going to be here, and I said, "Well, you got to notify the press, didn't I?" Mm -hmm. And I said, "Because the press has got to be there if we're going to if we're going to have three of us there." So, so were you aware that we we're going down there? I was aware that Terry was having something down with the residents there. I wasn't aware that you guys were down there. I found out at the meeting when I got the email at the same time the banner did, 20 minutes before the meeting happened. Well, I was there because I'm the street commissioner, for starters. You know, so Which, it's fine. It, it, it's fine, there's things, but this, it didn't happen the way that it should have happened. And all I'm asking is that it needs to happen differently from now on. I agree with you. Yeah, 100. Yeah, and again, I wouldn't have approved of having more than two commissioners available for a meeting like this, with the exception that they both lived on that. But I, it doesn't matter if they live on the street or not. If there's three there, that that is a commission meeting. Absolutely. If you ask the public what their thought would be on it, I'm guessing it would be the same thing. That's, I'm just asking that we don't do this to the public again. That they improve the minutes that you have. What did the banners, did you, did you notify the banner? What did they say when you called them? I notified them. Okay. I sent out a message. I sent out a message after you were, you were standing in my office. As soon as you told me, I informed the banner and Levi and then I had other, other obligations. I didn't even think that we needed an agenda. And so when I got back and Levi had messaged me five minutes before the meeting while well, I was gone because I had a, an appointment. And so then I called Stephanie of League of Cities and she told me to get the agenda out of what it was about and get minutes written up and get them posted ASAP. Did and so that is what we did. You? Mm -mm. So that is what, that's what I did because that's what I was advised by North Dakota League of Cities to do. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Any other discussion? That we do it different next time. Well, some all different. Just. Have we ever ran into this issue with me before? Like I say, this was extenuating circumstances where, and I didn't, it was the residents that actually asked for the meeting. It wasn't the city. So we participated, and you guys have valuable information about how the flooding takes place on right. rail. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I could have stayed home, and you guys could have handled it, but again, I felt that we were kind of ramrodding this to make sure that Steve comes up with a viable flood reduction plan for Loyal Avenue and the backyards over there. And that's why I didn't expect it to be a, a you know, 
a special meeting because this was information gathering for Steve and the residents that were there. And that's, I didn't ask Ashley to put anything in because we had this go around before that I didn't call it a special meeting because it was an informational meeting and with special uh, meeting laws, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, there are certain exceptions where you don't have to call a special meeting when it comes to some of these things that, uh, and emergency management is one of those situations where you don't have to have a special meeting. And flood mitigation would have been a part of this but if you want to take and have a special meeting as commissioners, you're the majority, you know, that's fine. Oh, well, we just need to watch, watch, watch out. We don't want to get ourselves in hot water. But I think otherwise we are very conscious of any time that two of us are together that there's not a third one that comes in. So again, my exception to this rule was is that it was an informational meeting, not a special meeting, and I didn't think that we had to publish anything. So, but. If you want to take and have the, the motion and approve it. So, Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Levi? I'm going to abstain. I wasn't there. Well, then I'm going to abstain too. Because I didn't think it was a special meeting. Or do you want me to take and vote yes? John, what do you think? <clears throat> Well, I think that if uh, Levi and Terry both abstain, the motion's going to fail um, for lack of majority. And, but, uh, but what's your opinion on meeting down there, me and Mike and him as a group? I, I think that there was no harm intended in doing it, but I also think just because I've read uh, Attorney General's opinions now for close to 45 years that if the question was asked uh, of the Attorney General, was it a meeting, they're going to err on the side of saying yes, because there were three there. Uh, that's what I think. And would there have been any, any uh, problem for the city of Hillsborough? No, I don't think so. I think that the only thing uh, Attorney General Stengem would have said would be, um, do an agenda and publish minutes, or, and guess what? We already covered that. So, um, you know, I think that kind of goes back to what Levi then said. Is we just don't want to go through this um, if we can avoid it. But, you know, I think we've got clean hands, and, and uh, we, we didn't do anything that we would be no. reprimanded for um, other than having to do what we've already done. Okay, well, I respect your opinion. Thank you. So what is so that? So do you want to go back and change your vote? I don't feel that I can vote on minutes that I wasn't at. And that's the way that we've done it for many meetings. But you're the one that raised the issue. I will approve the minutes, the motion based that we need the minutes. That is the only reason I'm approving it. And I'll abstain. So, motion's carried. <clears throat> now, can we move on to the presentation of the bills? I'll move to approve the bills. I'll Levi. second. Them. Dave seconds. Uh, any discussion before you? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same. Uh, motion carries. City Commissioner reports. Mike, we will start with you. Okay, we had a uh, we had a key that was broke off in the lock in uh, the armory. We, uh, we got that fixed because we had to fix that right away. And when he was here, I had him look at all the locks on the outside doors to see if we, we could get those six. So there's one key for all of them, and then there'd be one key for the two doors on the inside that the janitor would use. So. So we can get rid of a lot of keys that we don't know what they work for, and the price of that would be about seven hundred dollars. So in a quote here, so if we want to, uh, if you guys want to do that, I will call them and have them move ahead with it. Any financial issues, Ashley? I don't think so. Bambi, would that solve a lot of things for the Child Development Center? Also, having just one 
kind of master key? For us, it's not a big deal. It's everybody coming in and constantly asking what key goes to what because no one else knows what keys go to where. So I think it's a win-win for everybody, but it doesn't directly affect us necessarily. But yeah, one key is a lot better than me carrying around 10 right now. And, and Mike, I think that streamlines the access problem for us too, that we can control it at City Hall better, yep. having one set of keys. And we only have three keys, and that's it. Okay. And then make sure that anybody has to check them on. Like I say, that'll help us to maintain and control over there. She can have one. We can have two. Okay. So we don't need to make a bunch of keys that Jim wants one to. <laughs> and any other questions from the commissioners? Do I have a motion to take and uh, go ahead and have Mike uh, talk to Kurt Lock and Key to take and rekey all the outside doors? I'll make the motion. Dave makes the motion. I'll second. Lee by seconds. Any other discussion? Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Levi? Yes. Any yes for me? Anything else, Mike? Uh, I had the girls send a notice to the guy over on the highway that got his garbage piled up. I felt it uh, means it was garbage on the curb that we didn't need to wait to have something done, that we needed to get something done right away. So it, we've got a date on it here within the next week, so if we don't do anything, then I'll go over there and clean it up. <clears throat> I don't care. But <clears throat> he's going to get charged for it. So yeah. And then let us know, then do we have any extra garbage receptacles if we have to go over and clean it up that we can take over and pick up and some of us commissioners can load it up? We do a tobacco bucket out there. We do a dumpster. Well, nothing else. The front yard, maybe we could get done by Friday for Monday. Maybe I'll grab an extra dumpster. There's probably two dumpsters full in the front yard that we stuck. Okay. So. I won't be able to help till next week if you do it this week, but. Day off? <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> so was the letter just for the front yard, or was it for the whole yard, or? Uh, well, if we can get the front yard so, cleaned up. Right. You know, especially for next week. You know, when they come on Monday. <clears throat> Otherwise, eventually that stuff's going to start rolling around. So. Yeah. And, and just, uh, we we had a discussion also, and uh, we did check to make sure that the utilities are still connected, so there's still somebody supposedly that uh, is, is living or occupying the property, so yeah. we did do that follow-up, too. Well, I hope so. it doesn't stay like it is now. Well, especially before winter. <clears throat> That's going to be a mess of snow blowing stuff. a pile in the backyard there. Yeah. Okay, Mike, uh, like I say, uh, if, you, if we haven't done it by next week, let me know and I'll come over and help you. Anything else, Mike? No, sir. So Dave? I have nothing. Levi? I have nothing. Uh, the, uh, I'd like to, you know, say thank you to the uh, community. Uh, the airport uh, open house and the fly-in was uh, pretty successful. I think that uh, the uh, cruising cafe sold out of their food, so that was a pretty good deal for uh, Mike and and uh, his crew, and uh, there was quite a few planes. I wanted to say we had seven, 11 flights that took up kids and adults, basically, for orientation flights. So it was pretty popular, and uh, there were some donations made for the flights. Uh, the simulator was pretty popular. So thanks to everybody out there. In the uh, I know Paul and, and John were there. Uh, I appreciate everybody coming out and taking a look at the airport. So that's all I have. And nice deal, Terry. Pardon, Paul? It was fun. I, um, we're hoping that we can take and continue to expand, so I appreciate that. <clears throat> okay, Jim. Um, the other thing I have is uh, the FYI reminder that uh, I told my bench that our Saviors is doing their annual Sunday morning on Sunday. And then we'll drop their kids off half the street. Okay. They'll take them down when we're done. I was wondering what over there by the hospital. What did we have to do in the street? I see we dug way down. Was there a big leak or? There was a leak over there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's still real well. Okay.
Okay. Terry, I think we normally I'll make the motion to approve that our saviors have the street shut down on Sunday. Okay, we have a motion. Dave seconds. Okay. Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Levi? Yes. Any yes for me? John? I don't have anything. Okay. Ashley? <clears throat> okay. Uh, first, the flex pace buy down loan that we did for Nicole, we're starting, we made our first annual payment on that, but how. Um, I was looking through when we went through the um, budget and stuff, and I just need you guys to have a motion, to make a motion to take the funds for the interest payment out of the sales tax due to retention and attraction, since that's, that's the only one we didn't do that for. I'll move to take the buy down for the flex waste loan for Sunday Brew out of the sales tax for retention improvement. Do I have a second? Second. Mike seconds. Any other discussion? Mike? Yes. Dave? Yes. Levi? Yes. Any yes for me? Go the other way next time. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Anything okay, else? Okay, and then um, Bambi had brought this up before, but um, about she had asked the other day if we want to purchase mop heads for the armory because they just got carpet laid down in their um, entryways and so we don't need Airmark to come and lay rugs anymore so all they'd be coming there for is to give us clean mop heads and the mop heads are really not that they're not that expensive if we go we can even order them off of Amazon or run to Walmart and pick up they're pretty cheap so just wondering if you guys want to buy like two, what do you think, Bambi, two or three? We've got a pack of them at the shop. We buy them from Granger's probably oh. a six pack. There we go, never so mind. If you have a big variety, if you want more than one, we can. Yeah. And we have terminated the contract, right? Um, I'll have to double check with Des. Her and I talked about it, but I can't remember if we were waiting until we had talked about the mop heads. Okay. And... If Jim has them, then we don't have to have a Correct. motion to buy them. So, Correct. Okay. That's all I got. And I haven't heard anything from the sheriff's office. So moving on to old business. Can I, can, sorry, Bambi just reminded me. Um, do the rugs, the rugs that were in there were ours, correct, you said? What do we want to do with those ones? She just has them rolled up and... <laughs> I think we should we'll just put them in storage. So just take them. We threw away the ones that were like Total. summer, but there's quite a few nice ones that we just rolled up and put in the corner. So there's those, and then all the Ampride rugs that have been dropped off since it was done, those are all still rolled up in the mop closet for them. So you basically don't need the Ampride service anymore. Right. Here, we still need them. We still need a couple here. Well, all the entryways are that carpet right now, so it's like that. Even in the hallway? What? You said you would never use them in a hallway? We kept the main one at the front door, just because of the traffic coming in, like in the winter, to collect a bunch of that. But the other two are big entrances, and they were tripping hazards because they were duct taped everywhere. So we don't, we would prefer to not have them. Do you need any city hall? For that that uh, the tile to the bathroom, or do we have something we there, have don't rug we? there. Yeah. So you want them? We'll just keep them, and I'm sure we'll use them somewhere. Okay, and then you'll have somebody. <coughs> yep. Okay. That's all I got. Okay, moving on to old business. Second reading of the brew pub ordinance fee amendment. <laughs> I'll move for the second reading of the brew pub ordinance fee amendment. Levi makes a motion. Do I have a second? Mike seconds. Any other discussion? Levi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Mike? Yes. Any yes? Well, I abstain. Excuse me. Okay, moving on to the Goose River Brewery license approval. New business. Ashley, I'll let you talk. 
Okay, so the Terry submitted his license for the his liquor license for the brew pub, and that is um, the same format as what's being sent to the state. And he can't send it to the state until we approve it here. So we just need an approval for him to get the license, which. It's $500, that's what you guys just voted on to um, put the fee at $500. I do have a question, Terry. Sure. On here, it shows a patio seating area. What is your plan there with the liquor license? I would like to do it like they do in Grand Forks and Fargo that uh, uh, drinks and meals it could be in an outdoor setting there with a roped off area. Eventually, I plan on doing kind of a fancy uh, plasma cut uh, goose river and kind of some piece that will go around the front porch as well as the uh, back porch there. Um, at the current time, I don't see that we could approve it according to our ordinance. Based on what our current ordinances have, it says that um, the bar person must be able to see outside to those seated in the patio if it's going to be a food and eating area. We're going to have a camera up there. That's not what the ordinance says. It says for closed or screened areas. Uh, and it also says no private license on or off sale shall contain any side rooms, closed booths, or screen closures, nor shall any screen, partition, curtain, blind, or obstruction, or any kind prevent a clear view at it all times of all parts of the interior of the private license, all booths located. Such premises shall open directly into the main part. No license shall for the retail sale electric should be printed to place in the windows or door of the license premise any sign, advertising, matter paper cards or any other materials which shall in other way obstruct the view. The view from street level and through the windows and doors premises should at all times be open. I don't know though, would that, would that, would we be okay with the camera if that was required without a, an obstructed view? I don't know. That's and I'm just saying by what it's read right here or what we have that <clears throat> I don't want to put us in a situation because you, as the commission has in the past, it's been very strict on outside seating areas, so. But it is a lot different than a, a beer garden. I understand that, but that's <clears throat> not, I'm just going by what our areas or what it says that you have to have direct view. If you had windows that were bigger, then that would take care of that issue, but. So I haven't seen the application, Ashley. Is there, in the application, is there anything that uh, talks about the camera? Or Terry, you probably don't have to help either. Well, yeah, we're having cameras both inside and outside. It's a requirement for the brewery. And we uh, look at it that, again, with uh, the ability to make sure not only to monitor the patio, but also to uh, know when a waiter or waitress has to go out to take and check to see if there's other things that are needed. Yeah, I think that would work. The only time I see it really being uh, is the summertime, early fall, wintertime, nobody's gonna sit out there. Probably. What are the other commissioners? We have to amend our ordinance. That doesn't say anything about a camera in there, does it? Well, but the the question is the view, and with a camera, you've got the view. And I don't I don't think that's a problem unless yeah, um, and Terry's I, I, employees I would cover the camera. I understand that. I just was wondering if you. I I understand what you're saying, but would we have to change our ordinance to say that? I don't think so. Okay. But wouldn't that view all, 
So that would mean that one camera or two, whatever it takes to cover it, would have to be on at all times. It could never change off of there. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fixed the on the patio. Were open, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that would be it. Yep, it's, and it's fixed on the patio. It'll be in that corner where the jog's out on the brewery. So, Dave, to do a better job of answering your question, no, I don't think we'd have to amend the ordinance. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Well, I'll let you ask. I have none. I have none. And this is for, it doesn't say on here, it just says beer, wine, and liquor. It doesn't say what type of application it is. Like which ones of ours are you? It'll applying? be the uh, alcohol and the brew pub are the two licenses. Since we're limited to two licenses. This is the brew pub license. This is, we were, like in other meetings prior, we were talking, you guys were talking about having the state one be ours as well. And so this is what the brew pub license would be for the city. But it doesn't, what I'm saying is it doesn't say on here brew pub or, you know what I'm saying? I'm just asking well, no, what license we're, we're, we're. It says, it clarifies in the back, it says it's talking about your application qualifying as a brewery has been approved. That's explaining everything. This one? But I think Lee's yeah. point is that we need to determine how hard it's going to hit Terry's pocketbook. What what licenses are we issuing? Be, you know, because this will be the brew pub, and then we do the liquor license, beer and liquor license separately. So what did we figure out? I'm trying to think off the top of my head. It was like close to a thousand dollars altogether that he will have to pay. No, it's close to two thousand. Was it close to two thousand? Yeah, expensive. I knew it was a lot. Well, no. see, there's the question was is that Terry said he was applying for two. So this is just the brew pub, not the alcohol license? No, it would be both. So now we're mudding it up again. That's why I'm asking, which ones are we applying for with this application? Yeah, I think that's a good question. And so we get it, get it right on the first try. Um, your license, does that run through the end of September and then you do this all over? For the again? city, mm -hmm. yes. And then for the uh, state, it's the end of the year. Okay, so we're prorating here for one month. Right. Then is essentially what we're doing uh, until our applications are due again. And I think that uh, um, the motion approving the application should uh, include specification of group hub. And, and what, on an off sale beer and liquor? Well, the uh, brew pub will, the, that will have wine and beer on and off sale with it. Okay. So and then alcohol the will be actually the, the alcohol liquor, portion yeah. of it, the liquor. And so that's just for on, on site, on sale. But so then. Not off sale. No. Okay. So I, I think as long as we clarify that in our motion, um, not only does that help you, Ashley, with the proration then, but it also tells everyone here what licenses are being issued, and, and that also then means what would be available for someone else. Yep. And then to clarify a little bit more, Levi, that we will be applying for tax purposes for the brew pub through the tax department at the state level. So that's a separate permit, right? But the, so this brings up the next question. If we're doing on sale, if you're doing an on sale license for alcohol, and then the brew pub is where the food would come in, are you only serving beer and wine outside? Well, that's why I'm asking the question. I'm here to get your input. And that's why we run it. My preference would be is, is that we don't have any glass outside. I think for the time being, being that you're not going to get this open and running by the outside running by this time, our, 
This year we're not. This year you're not going to get the outside patio. I think we should hold off on that until you have it figured out a little bit farther, and we can make things a little bit more clear. That would be my well, opinion it, on it. I, I, I respectfully would like to have it answered tonight, because if we drag it out and you change your mind, my business planning has to. We have to lock it in one way or the other tonight. Is what I would prefer. <clears throat> But it puts but it. What we lock in tonight, though, that may be something you request be done differently with the October license, correct? Well, I'll, I'll apply for the same two licenses. I'll just renew those. And it, uh, the state probably won't be able to get it here until about the 1st of October, the way that it works with them. So. The only thing that I need the license from the city for is to be able to buy, to be ready to open on October 1st. I can't really go to a wholesaler and buy anything, you know, or get uh, other beers for my taps until I have the licenses. Well, I think, you know, this is this is new to Hillsborough, so I guess I don't see the any legal issues of, of approving two licenses tonight, but Levi's point, I think, is well taken on, on you know, maybe a little more specificity the next time around. But this is going to get you up and running, yeah. and which we want to do. I, I, I would like I to uh, have Steve weigh in on the whole, you know, because I want it to be family friendly. And so I want to make sure that the hours, you know, for families are right. Uh, if there has to be a, a, a barrier between the bar and the uh, seating area, <clears throat> all those things I think are parts of that we have to have Steve as the law enforcement answer to, which goes back to the patio. Does he feel that it's appropriate to have alcohol out there or not? I, I think those are questions that you as commissioners, we so need to get answers to. We're approving something here for a month, correct? Well, no, it's, I'll Our apply for the, just, uh, I'll, I'll actually just, uh, you know, again, apply for the same ones next time. It'll just be uh, extending. Which be in a month? Yep. For the city, the state, it's the end of the year. I have to re uh, reapply. It just gets, you know, our liquor license, when you're asking for an on sale, the same on sale as, uh, tap that or a and r they don't allow it what you're allowing to bring food in for is the brew pub so that's where it gets confusing to me if you wanted food in there for the full liquor license it would be the same that the one that the um the sport had which specifies that you have to sell a certain amount of food but that's why we do a brew pub, because we're brewing beer. Right, but that's where it gets confusing, because now, does that allow you to take it, the alcohol outside? Does that allow you to sell the alcohol on the other parts? Yeah. I think there's just a lot of questions that we can't answer tonight, but you want to get this approved, or I think the best option for us would be to approve it, but at this point, you just don't can't have the patio seating. Not saying that we won't approve it later, but if we approve the patio seating for you and then we find out later that something is wrong, now the tap that or A&R or the Vets Club could open it up to outdoor seating. I, I'm just here to answer your questions. Well, you're, you're looking at October 1st. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to open up the patio because I don't have the furniture for the patio this year. So, so well, we can approve it tonight because it's not going to affect that anyway. And then we have to reapprove it in a month. We could, but I'm just saying, if we approve it tonight, we can't. I think we can't approve it with the patio seating. That's my feeling on it because it's going to get. We need to figure it out. So well, if I have... We'd have a month to figure it out. Right. So, so if I have, so, again, when I apply, I'm going to ask for the porch up front. So you have the two big windows. And if I put I had a Rondack chairs out in front of the big windows, then can they go out and drink? I wouldn't know without you explaining what I guess I'm not... 
well, well, I think it goes back to the patio. Your point on having Steve look at this. Yep. You know, that's what we did when we had concerns at the Vets Club. Uh, it wasn't Steve, it was Ray that, that met with the Vets Club and we got the issues resolved and, and there was some partitioning and so on. But that was something between the Vets Club and Ray as our chief of police at that time. And yeah, I was planning on, <coughs> excuse me, on calling uh, Steve and talking about it and getting his input, but then I went, well, it's more your job to take and do the inquiries with Steve because, you know, now you'd have to believe me coming in and saying, hey, this is what Steve told me. So I think that's a pr part of your uh, due diligence as a commission is to, uh, you know, make sure that Steve agrees with uh, what we would like to do. And I, I got it. I think that Steve's going to be kind of, you know, he hasn't dealt with the brew pub uh, license before either, so. I don't think there's anything wrong with the brew pub license. It's, it's just how our ordinance are written and what you're applying for and what we need to do to make it fit. So the other question I have for you, Terry, are you stepping down for this moat? Yep. So you're I'm stepping abstaining. down. Yep. Are you abstaining or are you stepping down? Well, I can step down if you okay. want to take and run it. That was my question. I just wanted. Is there any other discussion on this? Does the public have any input? Do I have a motion for the Goose River Brewing license approval? I'll make the motion to approve with the idea that the outdoor seating is not allowed. Can we do that? Can I ask just one question, though? Sure. If I renew at the end of the month, does that come in front of the commission again, or is it an automatic renewal that the city just does if we pay? No, I, think, I think we have to go back we, through it. I think all of them. All of them. We, we always all bring them. them. Yep, you we want to know for next year. Yeah. Yep. It's not That'll as thorough as meeting. this one, but it is a renewal. Yeah. Is there a second? In that time, then we're supposed to talk to law enforcement to see what their opinion is on it. There. I would reach out to Steve or have Ashley reach out to Steve to get care of clarification and have John yep. research this a little bit farther is my thought. I'll, I'll second it. They're properly moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Any discussion from the public? Um, all those are Dave? Yes. Mike? Yes. And a yes for me. Motion passes. I'll turn the chair back over to Terry. Thank you. Uh, the Hillsborough School Cash Raffle event, I assume, permit approval? Yes. I'll, I'll move to approve the cash raffle. Levi moves. Dave seconds. Any other discussion? Okay, Levi? Yes. Dave? Yes. Mike? Yes. Motion passes. And beautification committee ordinances, policies, and procedures. I think this is you, Levi. Yep. Uh, so I have two names. I have not heard back from JR yet. If there was anybody from the um, HBA, unless Paul knows of it, if you guys have approved anybody. Yeah, that, that I Adam, was told uh, Adam Smeldon Adam came Smeldon. in and told me he was doing it. I haven't heard from JR. JR yet. Oh, I don't know. That's what Adam told me. I will wait to hear from JR. Sounds good. Uh, the two names that have reached out to me are AJ Anderson and Eric Johnson. Both have expressed interest and would like to be on the committee with the commission's blessing. Uh, and then the other two things that I have, I just thought if we're going to make this a little bit more uh, a formal thing where it's done and they have some actually teeth this would be added into section three of our ordinance um, i don't expect a first reading or second reading on this anytime soon i just thought this would be something to look at um, basically it just says the commission terms for those commissioners um, and what happens if there's a vacancy the rules and records meetings quorums compensation same thing that we would have for a pnz and other committees the other thing I put together that I thought would be good, just because of 
after Dave had sent the email to us about that yard. What's kind of a policy procedure place of how do we, if we have a yard or we have something, how do we take care of it? Um, and so it's just saying what would we do with trash, rubbish, junk, um, contrary to the public health, same thing that's in our ordinance. First thing would be recognition, and the recognition would come in to the auditor's office. The auditor's office would keep track of when they were notified, the address, um, kind of what that person is saying is wrong with it, and then uh, the person that's making the uh, recognition of it or complaint and then a phone number for them so that we can reach them if needed. And then we don't need to keep track of it if there's any supplicant or more calls on it, just note that there has been calls on it. Um, so that ticket then, once the city has it, the ticket would be created, whether it's a city employee or somebody on, the, on that committee would go out, um, take pictures of it and look at it. If the, whether it's a city auditor staff or somebody from the Beautiful Commission Committee feel comfortable in, in saying that this is a violation, for example, what Mike did, that would be a, a violation of it. There is no questions on it. Take the pictures, the letter would get sent. If there's any questions, then either the auditor staff or um, the beautification committee member would refer to the committee. So that, that would be our first step. Then the committee would send the letter, look at it, um, send a letter if needed. Um, everything is noted in that journal, just so we are keeping track of everything. Um, on the first letter, we'll follow the ordinance that says when it's supposed to be cleaned up by if we don't hear from them or it doesn't get cleaned up by the date, then a second letter would be sent. And if nothing is done after the second letter, then we would go in and do it according to our ordinance. And that would not happen unless it came to the commission. So the, the beautification committee after the second letter wasn't done, then it would come to the commission. If that sounds, and this is just a working thing, something so that the audit ha auditor's office has something to work with. We do, so we kind of have a way of going through this. And that's all fine and dandy, and I know we're gonna follow certain rules and whatever, but it takes some damn long to get anything done. I know, but if we don't do it that day, the way, then we end up with, we have to follow what the ordinance says. And with the second letter, we could, it doesn't, I don't remember that there was a set time. Yeah, he already knows that. I already pointed that out. Um, and yes, there may be errors, and I didn't <laughs> errors in it. I didn't uh, proofread it completely. Can it? I don't know. We at the auditor's office. We were really confused. We need to fix some of the wording because we're not comfortable. We've already been shoved under a bus and backed over with this thing, and we're not comfortable <laughs> sending out the letters. Even asked Mike, I didn't want to send out that letter to that. And he said, nope, send it out. I'll take the heat. And I'm like, okay. So we sent it out. But I thought the whole thing of the beautification committee was you guys were going to take the pictures. And then if you guys agree that the properties in question need to be cleaned up, then the president from your committee would bring it to the commission, and then the commission would approve would approve if the letters get sent out for the first letter. And then the second letter, if they don't get it cleaned up, then we could send the second letter out if your guys your committee decided that it needed to be sent out or if it hadn't been cleaned up. I thought the whole point of the commission, the beautification commission was to have a set, five set of people to go out and take these pictures and bring it to the commission and then go onto the letter phase. And to me, this is exactly what we're already doing. The difference in this is saying 
what I'm saying is if the, for example, if it's an exact, I mean, the one that Mike did. Right, it was very noticeable. Yeah. Very noticeable, very plain violation. Do we wait once a month to meet as a beautification committee or does that get done because it's in the best interest? That's the type of things that I would say. And I'm not saying that, it says in here the auditor's office, but it could be the beautification committee. And yes, whoever the president of the beautification committee, based off of this, if we go by this, would then send the letter. That was garbage. You know, there's a difference between a bunch of junk sitting around. That's garbage. You know, eventually it's going to start blowing around the neighborhood. And, you know, that just needs to be taken care of right now. That doesn't need to wait for... Right, but you have to have a way of doing it, Mike, and that's what this is doing. <coughs> we did. We sent a letter to the guy. But that's what I mean. I'm getting caught in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking... You're not catching any heat because I'm taking... I, I'm just saying, but I am because I'm in the middle because that's the job. Is Sometimes you just do things. But you have to remember, <laughs> Ashley, no matter what, you're going to be in the middle well, of I anything know. because... Well, I know that, but I'm just first. trying to make it flow a little bit better so we can... Not Jim could flood the city with sewer, and you're going to take the heat for it. I know, I know. I'm just trying to smoothly transition these things. I'm a, yeah, I don't think we will. <laughs> don't be giving him any ideas. Well, I, I, I'm going to agree with Mike. But I've been we've been looking at it for how many months now. I almost <coughs> had somebody over there with a bath foot cleaning it up, and I didn't want to because I thought. Okay, we do it this time. How long is it before it's back out there again? And they just they tell themselves, we'll just throw it out there and somebody will pick it up. Now, I do want to make I, a point. I, I want to make a point too. This is the first time out. over there. No, but it's there's not. been refrigerators over there. There's yep. been tires. And they over just there. neglect. And there was three guys out in Bulmer one day picking up a few items. Don't know what they did with them. Three grown men, and it's it's still all sitting there. I, I don't know. I don't understand. But in addition, Mike is also going to charge it to probably through utilities. That, I think that's a, a question that we have to, a procedure that we have to take and rectify. Well, we can't charge sure. it through utilities because that's not what our ordinance says. Our ordinance says that we can charge it through, through taxes. Property, taxes. property taxes. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we already have the ordinance in place. We just need to follow it and do it. Mike, what he did was fine, and that's basically what this is saying is this is not a set in stone, this is the way we're doing it. This is a, a guideline for us to go through so that Ashley doesn't take heat all the time, so that we actually get it done. We've been waiting and do, not doing things for how long? This is, you know, let's get it done. The first thing is is the, if there's a notification, it goes to the auditor's office and she notifies the president of whoever it is on the beautification commission or committee. And then from that, we go through it. But these two documents give the beautification committee something to do. If we don't do this and we just say we're going to allow them to you know, take pictures and then they got to bring it to the city commission, what is the point of the beautification committee? Because the other it's thing that's exactly what it has been for the last however many years. We've done this for years. We got out and taken pictures and we've never done anything about it. You know, it's funny. I was in the office reading minutes from nineteen eighty three. Yeah, so it's before I was, was born. There was an entry in there on two citizens approached the council complaining about residents some property that was in the same so it's that was 1983. It's been going, it goes on forever. Okay, and no, that's what I'm saying. What that's we've been thing. doing is the same thing you've been doing since 1983, and it hasn't worked. So we got to try something different. And we have two people, two individuals that are both talked to me about it and said they're, they want to change it. But there's other things that they want to change and do besides just the junk rubbish and everything else and that was the point of putting some money in there is you know maybe they want to make railroad park a little bit nicer maybe they want to some communities have uh, pictures on the side of buildings whether we change out some lights downtown make our community look a little bit nicer we're putting in how many million dollars of infrastructure looking at new streets but if we don't do the other things 
So we have individuals that are willing to do this, and we're will and we have a committee that could be formed and ready to start as soon as we can get the the commit the committee together. We have two from here, we have two from the public, we just have to check with JR as to who's gonna be on that and go and we can start. Can I ask one more question? They have to pay a, a garbage fee to take and get the uh, the receptacles, right? Is there a way that we can leverage the garbage receptacle fee to take and be more immediate than the property taxes or more immediate than uh, the utility? Again, garbage is garbage, right? So if we have to take over, uh, well, we'll it, it'll probably be a, a tractor in the back hole. But if we fill up that loader, you know, that's what, one or two receptacles. Is there a way that we could change our ordinance to reflect that we're gonna take and charge them for the, uh, like the garbage receptacles? This is the extra, extra ones that we had to take and bring so, in place. Which we maybe could do that, but what is that going to do? So they don't pay their bill. We send them to collections and we sit there for how long and they don't pay it. And it gets assessed to their taxes. And it still gets assessed to their taxes. So why not just assess it to their taxes right away? Because whether, you know, if somebody puts out a, a fridge on the street, one person might call it garbage, one mer person might call it a smoker, and one person might call it my new garage fridge. Who knows? So we can't say, we can't really chain, charge garbage because what we're charging for garbage is recycling is what they put in that bin. But it's only the cleaning week that they should be able to take and put things on the boulevard for others to take off. You know, it's just like there was TVs and all kinds of stuff that were out there at one time. And so, again, that, that's a violation of the ordinance too. You know, if we go over there and clean it up, we'll, we'll do it like the ordinance says. We'll build it out to their property tax. And that's exactly what, what this is saying, Mike, is that we're doing it. We have the policy. We have mm -hmm. procedure to do it. Whether it's Mike sending the letter, whether it's the auditor's office sending the other the letter, or whether it's the beautification committee sends the letter, the first step on any process is the pictures of it and documentation and the letter being sent. And then, Ashley, you know how many days they have by ordinance? I, I think don't. It, is it two weeks? I can't remember off the top of I, my I head. Think, I think it is. I think it's like two I think weeks. Give them time to get the right, so you get two weeks from the time that the letter sent, and then from that, and I didn't put it on here, um, or I did put it on here. You know, if that second letter, we go put it on their door. <laughs> There's nobody living there. <laughs> well, but it's still there. They can't say they didn't get the letter then. <laughs> Let's go ahead and recognize Paul for five minutes. Well, why don't, you got a good start here. Why don't you guys? You got five people. You know, once you get the other one, why don't you five people get together before next city commission meeting and fine tune with uh, Ashley how you want to do this? Because right now you're kind of back and forth talking. Right. Get together, all five of you, and say this is how we're going to do it. I do, I do kind of think that you got to really clarify when you're going to send letters and when you're not. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself in trouble like you did last time. You know, yeah, Mike's taking the heat on this one, and it is garbage and so on and so forth, but. I think if you get those five people together, they should be able to come to a consensus how they want to do it and who is going to, who in the end is going to be the person that's going to say that letter goes out. Because I know David made a comment on the meetings that he would like, before letters go out, he would like to know, you know, the city commission to be notified, right? Great. I don't right. I'm all for this committee. Right, right. I just, I just yeah. want, right. I, I just think want that's what you need commissioners to be right. the, the right. you know, right. Right. That I know think, what's going on. Right. And I think if those people, because those are all the people in the, that are going to be part of the beautification and, and Ashley, and I don't, I don't think Jim has any interest in this, but if, you know, get, get something wrote up like you got that you're all in agreement on and then present it to the next meeting and then you can go forward with it. Because if you don't do something about it in a timely fashion, like you're going to, like he says, you're going to be dealing with it later. So, yeah, we're just, and I also we're would just like, on our own and our own. No. Right, right. And I also like the fact that, that Levi was talking about, I think we got to clarify somewhat, you know, what what all is the duty, so to speak. There's somewhat in here, but I do agree with the fact that, okay, what else can that, is the beautification committee just set up for 
you know, dilapidated properties or torn up properties, are they also looking at ways to beautify the city? You know, they're kind of pulling double duty is what they're doing, you know, and they're really two, two almost completely different things, you know, from the mindset of the people doing it. Because one person might be having the idea, well, I want to make the city look nice. Another person might be, well, I want to just get rid of some junk around here, you know, so. But I think being, especially being you have two commissioners that are on that committee, wouldn't it be, you know, you got two weeks before your next meeting, and then you have a little bit firmer, you can, you can kind of tighten up what you want here, or add what you want to do. Is it worth the discussion about the facade grant being a part of this then too, or? It could be, I mean, you know, and like, um, you know, like Paul said, I think in the end, it's still beautification. We're still, whether we're picking up people's junk or whether we're doing other things, it's still beautification. You know, and if Dave, would you be okay with the beautification committee when they send out the letters that the commission just got a copy of the addresses and the pictures of the yards or what violations were out? No, as long as we get, as long as we communicate, that's all I'm asking. Right. I'm, I just don't want to. You know, I don't want to be on the street and have somebody come up and start hollering about this letter they got. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I have a suggestion. But you know what I mean. Right. It's communication. That's what right. I'm asking. And I think that's what I was trying to do with this is, you know, get it put in down. And this is not, I didn't expect this to be finalized. This is what we're doing tonight. This is just a... A starting point for us to look at and you know and it's kind of like what Paul said I think by once you approve the committee that we can form it and these people that are, are okay with it then we can kind of do that start so um, just an idea since you already have two that are interested and then we have an HBA meeting tomorrow so we can get the answer from JR if he's gotten anybody shouldn't since there is so many different um, opinions on what the group should be doing, maybe the group should discuss that stuff at their first meeting and that way all of you guys can have input on what they think the group should be or the steps and what exactly the group is and what they want to be in charge of and how to go about it. And then bring what you guys put together to the commission and have them approve that. It's just an idea so that your committee has some input into some of this. I think that's what Terry and, and Paul and all of us were thinking. Well, that's not the way I understand. Or, I mean, that's what they just said. That's saying. what I. That's what I got out of it. Let's do that then. <laughs> <laughs> See, that just shows people take things differently. So, if I made a motion to approve AJ Anderson and Eric Johnson as the two residents um, for the beautification committee, and they are to have a first meeting set up before the next commission meeting. If we could modify that to say that if JR gets you a name and you're satisfied with that, that uh, you can also include that it's name. It's whatever JR, yeah, yeah, once JR gives us the name. Like and once JR, all three HBA, of instead of having to have another, you know, yep. motion on it. So, so and with the, appro with the approved member from HBA. There you go. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Dave seconds. Any other discussion? I'm going to start with Mike. Yes. Dave. Yes. Levi. Yes. Any yes for me? And I did have, if under new business, I have another thing. Okay. Oh, it should, probably should have been under old business. I was just checking on the status of our, at the armory, what we, if we've had anybody. No. Zero. Zilch. So do you want me to start looking for contractors? I have a contractor that's really interested, but um, with her mileage and um, her hourly rate, it is going to be around or a little over $1,000 a month. Woo. I think I would make a motion. I would move that we put an ad out for bids for cleaning the For arm. bids? Okay. We have a the X amount of hours that um, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Mike seconds. Any other discussion? Levi. Yes. Dave. Yes. And Mike. Yes. Yes for me also. Okay. That's anybody else have anything that they want to add? Uh, citizens out there, anything that wants wants you want to discuss at all or? 
A uh, couple things quick. Um, my place of employment is always a spot where we have water breaks there. I know Jim knows that. Um, three years ago, he has dug it up and repaired it beautifully. And then we dug it up again and dug it up again. And it's been dug up for kind of roughly put together and the weeds are like this tall on there. And is that something you guys just want me to take care of and, and get it fixed or what? I mean, you know, I, I didn't want to do it because you got your, your water gate valves there and all that. I don't want to screw any of that up. I mean, it just something I thought I would just bring So you're out. just looking for the beautification. There's no leaks or anything. You just want the weeds and stuff going No, because I can't run my lawnmower over it, right? Without, okay. I don't want to hit another, I don't want you guys to have another lawnmower bill with it, so. I wish in the future you could just come and talk to me. I, I guess I wasn't, I don't see everything. It hasn't been bothering me. I just didn't want to be one of those ones that gets a letter and, in the mail. And then our, our project, our water main project got postponed as far as I know until next year. And that's so, what John was saying. I was just curious. Do so you want us to fix it this year and then do it again next year? Or do we wait? Or? It, at this point of the year, as long as it just, I mean, okay. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not that bad. It's just, okay. I mean, I just got to take weed whacker over there. And we'll look at it and we'll just we'll, we'll smooth it out. Because you can see them. I, I will. I mean, John yeah, did it. We're a, expecting to dig it up again. And again, it's going to happen again in that same Yeah, time. so we might as well wait until next year. I'm fine with that. Okay. But it's just like, I just want to, I mean, you guys did a great job. I mean, the last time it looked really good. I was just, I come to work one day and it's getting dug up again. I'm like, oh, I better not be have a water break. <laughs> No water break this time. Just yeah. Regular. Yeah. Improvement. So, we'll so I'll let you and Jim work it out. Yeah, that's fine. Like I said, there's no there's no complaints in my head. I was just kind of curious on that. Sure. The second point I'd like to make is I think you guys finally got your beautiful yards over in the Jordal development. I don't yeah, those sided the yards look nice. You know, I mean, so I mean, I want that to be. I mean, I want. I kind of took a little offense to it. I do live over there. I mean, I tried to be back everything through that whole process, but I wasn't gonna. I guess that wasn't a nice thing, right? I didn't do the whole block, but. <laughs> I go through and that, that sod and, you know, it looks like they got sprinkler systems and stuff set up and it really yeah. looks nice on the yeah, ones that are finished. Nice yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> maybe the complaining did help though. Yeah. But no, I mean, I just say, I, mean, I, think, I think that's what you guys envisioned coming into Hillsboro. Yep. And I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of interest already. I think, I don't think they'll have a hard time filling those other ones. So it's good to hear. Yeah, like I say, I, I drove through the other day and it it really looks nice. They did an excellent job on the uh, on so the. So are you guys in charge of maintenance there? <laughs> we are. Yes. I see. That wasn't what I my understanding was when they first came in. Was when we were in charge of mowing, and that's when everyone was complaining about. Yeah, they had a crew long. that actually a maintenance crew that came in and maintained the yards. When I signed when I signed my lease, it does say that we are in charge of snow and. Okay. Lawn care. Yeah, but you had no lawn to care for. So that's why everyone was complaining. It's like a lot of people didn't have weed whackers. They were going to go buy a you know two hundred dollar weed whacker for. But I understood why because I called Jordals and I said, "Hey, your name's going to be in the paper, right?" It got brought up. I mean, it's. And it didn't take long, did it? No, it, it, I don't think they did it on purpose. I think no. you know all their projects are in Fargo, right. and between natural gas coming in, yeah. fiber optic coming in. Why would you lay sod, put a put a sprinkler system, lay sod, and then have them come in and bore natural gas? I just don't think they thought the weeds were that bad, but they were bad. But well, it's night and day. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I was impressed. It looked nice. I mean, it's. I think you know. I think it's housing that we definitely needed in this town. So we want to grow. Anything else? Good job, Mike. Good job. You must have a lot of what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Just take the credit. <laughs> okay. The, uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Dave makes a motion. We're adjourned. <laughs>